All right, we're going to do some practice for section 5.1, uh, factoring out the GCF and factoring by grouping. All right, first, just some practice on finding the GCF, because you can't factor out the GCF if you can't find it. So to find the GCF, remember, we're going to use the tree to get prime factors. So um, you guys can practice the tree off here by yourself if you need to. 54 is 9 times 6. 9 is 3 times 3, 6 is 2 times 3. So the prime factors of 54 are 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. I do not recommend that you use exponents for this part because um, it's harder to see what's in common if you've got them under exponents. 72 is 9 times 8. So I know 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, and 9 is 3 times 3. If you need to pause the video right here, do the tree on it. I can do some of this stuff mentally, but if you can't, then you need to pause and practice the tree. 90 is 9 times 10, which is 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. All right, now the GCF is the largest group of each of these factors. What do they have in common? I'm sorry, it's not the largest group. It's what they have in common, each of these factors. So let's look. They each have at least one 2. So the GCF will have a 2, just like that. They each have at least one 2. It looks like they each have at least two 3s. Yeah, there's two 3s in common. And that's it. So when we multiply those together, we get 18, a GCF of 18. And let's try it on number 2. Oh, variables. Okay. Um, you can write these all out if you want to. X to the 10. 1, 2, 3. That's X to the 10. Whoops, not 10. X to the 10. X to the 15. All right, but if you remember the shortcut, the GCF is just to take the variable and the smallest of the exponents. So the GCF here is x to the 10. All right, find the GCF of 30x to the 6, 45x9, and 60x to the 12. All right, what's the smallest number that goes into 30, 45, and 60? If you need to, go over here and use the tree on those. Um, after you're done with the tree, you should find the GCF is 15. How many x's are common? You choose the smallest exponent. So 15x to the 6. On number 4, find the GCF. All right, again, if you need some practice on that, use the space over here to, uh, to do your little factor tree. Uh, we know that 36 is 2 times 3 times 2 times 3, 6 times 6. I didn't write them numerically, but that's what it is. Uh, 60 is 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. Yeah, 15 times 4. And 120 is the same as 60, but with an extra 2 because it's 60 times 2. So those are the prime factors there. Uh, so the GCF, let's see what do they have in common. I see two twos in common. And a three. And that's it. So what is that? Four times three is 12. All right, now let's talk about the variables. A to the fifth, A to the seven, A to the nine. Choose the smallest exponent. So that would be a to the fifth. What about b? b to the 1, b to the 4, b to the 6. So it looks like just b to the 1. So the GCF is 12, a to the fifth, b. All right, number five, factor. The first step to factoring is to factor out the GCF, uh, which is undoing distributive property. So the first step is we have to know what the GCF is for these two terms. 
the smallest number that divides into 12 and 24 is 12. And then the smallest exponent on the x is the 3. So now we're going to divide by the GCF to see what will be left in the parentheses. So in this term, the 12s cancel. We subtract the exponents. We get x squared. In this term, 24 divided by 12 is 2. Uh, and the variables cancel because they're both the same. And of course, you check this by doing distributive property. When you distribute that GCF, you should get your original expression back. Same thing here. We're going to start by identifying the GCF before we can factor it out. So the largest number that goes into 24 and 40, if you need to, take some time to do your little factor trees out there. If you're good with your multiplication facts and all that, you should be able to tell that the largest number that goes into 24 and 40 is 8. Um, how many A's are common? A to the fourth. How many B's are common? B to the fifth. And then we divide by that GCF to find out what's left in the parentheses. 24 divided by 8 is 3. The A's cancel. Subtract the exponents on the B's. 40 divided by 8 is 5. Subtract the exponents on the A's. And the B's cancel. And you check by using distributive property. Okay, factoring. What's the GCF of these three terms? 18, 36, and 9 are all divisible by 9. The smallest exponent on the A is A to the 1. The smallest exponent on the B, also B to the 1. All right, so to figure out what's left in the parentheses, we divide by that GCF of 9AB. 18 divided by 9 is 2. Subtract the exponents on the A. Subtract the exponents on the B. 36 divided by 9 is 4. Subtracting exponents gives us A cubed b to the 1. All right, and this term is really interesting because what happens here is that the 9s cancel, the a's cancel, and the b's cancel. Everything cancels. But don't forget, that does not equal 0. That equals 1. When the top and the bottom of the fraction are both the same, it equals 1. So you're going to need a 1 here. Otherwise, when you check by distributing back, you won't be able to get back this term unless you multiply times 1. So don't forget, this is, a, this is a big concept here in factoring. If everything in your term cancels, it's reducing to make 1, not 0. 1. All right, let's factor. 40, 20, and 60 are all divisible by 20. What's the smallest exponent on the x would be x to the 7. The smallest exponent on the y would be y to the 10. Now, we have this z here, but there are no other z's, so the z is not common, so do not include it in your GCF. It's not common because only one term has it. So let's divide by our GCF 20x7y10. Okay, 40 divided by 20 is 2. Subtract the exponents on x, subtract the exponents on y, and you have that z7 with nothing that it's reducing with, so it's still there. In the second term, the 20 is reduced to make 1. The x is also reduced, so you just need to subtract the exponents on the y. In the third term, 60 divided by 20 is 3. Subtract the exponents on the x. Subtract, oh, the y's are going to cancel because they're both the same. So this is what we get. All right, we got some more practice problems on this page. On number nine, we did a couple like this in the, uh, in the lesson. Remember, this is two terms, and what you're looking for here is this common binomial. This x plus 3 appears in both terms. So when you factor out the x plus 3, you're bringing it to the front, and you're taking it out of both terms, and you're left with 
what was multiplied times those terms on the outside, x plus 4. On number 10, it's the same type of thing, except now you have three terms. But in those three terms, you see the common binomial of 2x minus 7. So you can bring that to the front, 2x minus 7. And when you're doing that, you're factoring it out of all three of those terms. So you're left with whatever was multiplied times that, x squared minus 3x plus 2. Okay, when you have four terms, the first thing you do is you look across all four terms to see if they have any factors in common. Um, it doesn't look like they're sharing anything. So the next step is to go ahead and divide it in half and do factoring by grouping. So we're going to do GCF three times here. What do these two terms in the front have in common? Well, they both have an A. When I factor out the A, or I take the A out, I'm left with X plus Y. The plus sign from the middle comes down. The back terms have a B in common. When I factor out the B, I'm left with X plus Y. And now you're looking for this common binomial like we just did above in numbers 9 and 10. The X plus Y is common, so you can bring it to the front. And you're taking it out of both of these terms, and you're left with A plus B. This is factoring by grouping. Again, there's nothing common across all four terms, so we're going to separate it in half. What's common in the front? They both have at least one x. When I factor out the x, I have x plus 1 because this x squared divided by x gives you x, but x squared divided by x, uh, x divided by x gives you 1. This negative sign comes down. These two terms have a 2 in common, but because I tacked this negative sign on, I'm actually factoring out a negative 2. So I divide both of those terms by negative 2. This, ne these negative 2's cancel, I'm left with an x. These negative 2's reduce, and I'm left with plus 1, because a negative divided by a negative makes positive 1. x plus 1 is common. Bring it to the front. Cancel it out of both terms, and you're left with x minus 2. All right, continuing on with factoring by grouping. Let's divide this in half. What do these first two terms have in common? They both have an x. Factor out the x, we're left with y minus v. Negative sign coming down from the middle. These two terms have an A in common. So I'm factoring out a negative A. So what do I have? Y minus Z. And it's a minus Z because you have positive divided by negative here. Now what do these terms have in common? They both have Y minus Z. So we bring that to the front. It factors out of both of these terms, and we're left with x minus a. All right, factoring by grouping some more. What do these front two terms have in common? Well, they're both divisible by 5, so we'll start with that. And they both have at least 1x. So we're factoring out 5x. Divide, subtract exponents, we get 3x minus 2y because those x's cancel. Plus sign coming from here. What's common back here? And they're both divisible by 2, and they have no variables in common. So divide by 2, we have 3x minus 2y. And again, when you're factoring by grouping, what should happen is these binomials should be the same. You can't go to the next step if they aren't. If it turns out that you're, you're looking for them to be the same and you, you don't have matching binomials, go back to this step because you probably made a mistake with your signs or something. So 3x minus 2y is common. We're going to bring it to the front. And we're going to divide it off of both of those terms and we're left with 5x plus 2.
Okay, number 15. More of the same. Divide in half. What do these first two terms have in common? Well, they don't have, their coefficients don't have anything common, but they do have an A in common. So we can factor out an A, and we're left with 2A minus 3B. We're going to bring down this negative sign. What do these two terms in the back have in common? Um, well, nothing, it looks like. When they have nothing in common, you're going to want to factor out a 1, because you have to factor out something to get these two matching binomials. So when you factor out a 1, it's actually negative 1, because we brought that negative sign down. You're going to have 2a minus 3b. And it's a minus because you're dividing positive 3b by negative 1 because of the negative 1 we factored out. And now your binomials match. 2a minus 3b. They're gone. We factored them out of both terms. We have a minus 1. And you really do need this minus 1 here. If you don't have it, when you distribute back, you won't get all the terms you started with. So you really do need that minus 1 there. All right, when we look across these four terms, I see that they do actually have something in common. So before I separate them and start doing factoring by grouping, I'm going to factor out a big GCF. All four of these terms are divisible by 2. So we'll start by just dividing them all by 2, just to get any GCF out that we can. And now this 2 will hang out. We'll see it in, its fi in the final answer. But now we're just going to separate these four terms and factor by grouping. These terms have a 5 and an x in common, so we're going to factor out 5x. When we divide by 5x, we're going to have 2x plus y. Bring down this minus sign. These two terms both have a 4. They're both divisible by 4. When we factor out a negative 4, we should have x, 2x, I'm sorry, plus y. And now the 2x plus y is what's common. So we bring it to the front. We divide it out of both of these terms. And we're left with 5x minus 4 from here and here. But don't forget this 2 that we started with way up here at the top also has to be in your final answer.